in October of 2015, I noticed that my left testicle was getting a little larger than my other testicle. And I, like most men that get testicular cancer, at least for, for the short term at the very beginning, I wrote it off as I was exercising every day because I was, you know, on active orders at that time. So I was, you know, running every day. I was on a bunch of supplements, you know, I was eating different. So I was like, ah, it's my testosterone. I'm getting older, you know, so who knows? But it got mm-hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger. And people told me for years, Aiden, that I have big balls because of what I do for a living. <laughs> but this, this was a little bit different. Um, so, and, and in the scientific uh, reference to this, and I'm hoping that you'll share some pictures. I'll send you a great, a great photo, not of my testicles, but of Yeah, the, it will depend on the photo you send, whether sure, I share it sure. or not, and also okay. how our relationship moves forward. That, that's a good point. Good point. Uh, <laughs> wow, BJ didn't even send a dick pic. He sent a picture of his balls. That's weird. Like, why not just send a dick pic? So, <clears throat> uh, Lord. <clears throat> yeah. Um, in my, in my ultrasound report, so I, 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 I took the day off of training. I went to the doctor, um, and they sent me to get an ultrasound, you know, typical just to kind of do a workup and see what it was. And in the report, it says left testicle size of a small orange. That was the actual medical definition. Lord. Like, that is yes. not normal. Well, I don't know it's who's not, to say what's normal, but that seems abnormally large to me. True, but he, that wasn't even what struck me. And at the time, I hadn't done my nursing program, so I didn't really understand nursing terminology. It then said, however, right testicle remains unremarkable. And I was angry. I was like, what do you mean <laughs> unremarkable? I think my testicles have been, done some pretty important things. So it's like in the Phantom Toll Booth, where the, uh, that one character is like, "It's all in how you look at things." Yes. You know? <laughs> exactly. So uh, that led to surgery. I had a left radical orchiectomy. They removed my left testicle. A few days later, they got the pathology back. It was testicular cancer. I, I later did chemotherapy, and then in July of 2016, I I got uh, medically retired temporarily from the Air Force. That was a very grueling process and a a story for another time, but that was very emotional for me. It had a big emotional toll because I identified on one, you know, I'm a professional actor. I live in LA and this is what I've been doing for, you know, 15 plus years professionally. And this is where I want to be. But on the side, part time, I was in the Air Force Reserve as a medic. And that became a very big part of my heart. So when I got medically retired, it really it really kind of hurt me uh, mm. inside. What we, I guess w- that was the beginning of my invisible wounds. So I came home in July of 2016. Um, and so basically about a year after I originally left, I wasn't even supposed to be gone for that long, but because of my cancer diagnosis, it just kept extending. Plus I was going through treatments and things like that. And when I came home, I had to adjust. I was back in LA, back to my normal civilian life, now dealing with this recent cancer diagnosis. And I was in remission and I was understanding what it's like to be a veteran. That's a weird thing for somebody. I, you know, didn't understand the VA system. I didn't know how I was going to get healthcare because I had healthcare from the military. And now I have this new thing with the VA and how does that work? Oh yeah. 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 It was, it was, there was a lot going on. So if I had to categorize that whole experience, that wasn't that bad. However, yeah, because I, and I tell people all the time, like I treated my initial diagnosis like a military mission. What do I have to do? What tasks do I need to complete? And I just knocked them out. Oh, I need to go to the doctor and get this. I need to do this. And I just got that. I was very healthy. And I had, I'd never really even been to the doctor prior to this before in my life, really. I mean, I think maybe if I had like the flu or something, but nothing this severe. I'd never been like the patient, you know? Wow. So I was home for about a year in remission, and I was expecting to return to the Air Force Reserve to uh, be reevaluated so that I could return and get removed from temporary retirement. And in July of 2017, I went in for my one-year CT scan, and my cancer was back. So <sighs> I, guess I, I guess I just didn't expect that to happen. 
And it didn't come back because I tell people I'm a two-time testicular cancer survivor. And let me be clear, that doesn't mean that I'm a flat bagger. I still have one. So <laughs> take note. Yeah, take, humans, take note, everybody. Hu humans looking to date BJ. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, I'm still I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm still profitable, people. I'm still profitable. So uh, that I think that confuses people because they think that if you're a you say two times testicular cancer survivor, they immediately think that it came back in your other testicle, which is a possibility. But in my case, it metastasized into my lymph nodes, which is scary because now it's in your system. And so yeah. I had to, this time, instead of doing chemotherapy, I went through radiation and I did about a month of radiation therapy uh, at the VA in Los Angeles. The worst part about my relapse, and this is really where I would consider I mean, change was already happened before. I was being, I became a patient. I became sick. I became not able to do my job in the military. I got medically retired. I didn't get to do the plans that I planned on and going through my career and doing all these great things that I always wanted to do with, with my initial diagnosis. But the worst part was really when I relapsed, I think because I had told myself, ah, it wasn't that big a deal. I took care of it. I was super healthy. It was so easy. You know, it was not that big a deal, but when it came back, that's a really scary moment because you're like, holy shit, my cancer's in a different part of my body. They didn't get it all. It's in my lymphatic system going metastasis. That's scary. So every day when I'm getting radiated, getting blasted with this radiation wow. throughout my body, like, you know, to be honest with you. I could deal with chemotherapy and radiation again. And yes, I, I got more sick on the radiation than, than I did chemo because of yeah, where think, they were targeting my radiation. I thought, I think that most, most people experience that, don't they? The, the radiation, I can't remember. One of them makes you sick. The other one doesn't. They're both poison. Uh, if you survive, then good job kind of a thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it just, my chemotherapy regimen, my initial one, wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and because of where they were targeting me specifically with radiation, that was an issue because it was in my lymphatic strip or my lower abdomen. So it was hitting my stomach and it was making me super nauseous. So I was coming home every day, Oof. throwing up and whatever. Well, my point in telling you all that is that I'm, if you told me, Hey, you're sick and you got to go do chemo and radiation, that is no problem for me because I understand the physical, I have to go do it. Yeah. The hard part for me was really the mental aspect and the change that it really kind of sunk in that I was at that point sick, like that this could be a problem for the rest of my life. I mean, here's another enlightening thing that I think a lot of people, especially if you've never dealt with a se severe illness or a chronic illness or whatever, my day-to-day -day life especially from the year following my relapse became going to the doctor. I mean, <laughs> I had, I have, tw I have 12 different specialties that I see. I not, I don't just go to the doctor, you know, every year to go see my, I see my primary every three months. I have a hematology oncologist, radiation oncologist. I have a neurologist. And so I got diagnosed with a bunch of other stuff and, you know, How do you balance all of that with, I mean, you, you have a big resume, my friend, and you are a busy man doing millions of things is what it seems I, like. Aiden, How I'm do like you do that? Well, first of all, I'm a busy guy. I'm like my ex-girlfriend. I get around, but <laughs> hello. she was a lovely woman. She was a lovely woman. Um, at that time, I think I was just trying to become a taskmaster. You know, mm. what, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? And it got to, at first I was like, okay, so I, th I think a lot of cancer patients and folks in remission and any survivor of any number of years will tell you, it, this is something that we talk about all the time because I'm on the board for the Testicular Cancer Awareness Foundation and I often lead a lot of discussion groups where we talk to each other as survivors about everything we're dealing with. And something that always comes up is you feel very strong. You feel like you're in control when you're constantly going to the doctor. Cause like someone's good. Someone's looking at me. 
you know, I'm going to the doctor today, so I'm not going to die. You know, <laughs> yeah, it, it's wow. annoying. It's, well, it's annoying to go to the doctor and like, you can't work and I got to take time off for this. And of course I live in LA, so the traffic and all that stuff. But at the same time, it's like, I'm at least getting seen. Whereas now I'm uh, two years in remission from relapse, well, two and a half, I guess. So my appointments, as far as from the specialties, are starting to space out a little bit. So you do kind of wonder, like, am I going to, am I okay? <laughs>